the peace and joy that his spirit expressed. I find his me, dear God, and make manifest. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well, the love, the peace and joy that his spirit expressed. I find his me, dear God, and make manifest. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well, the love, the peace, and joy that his spirit expressed. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living Lifeline. A very, very special welcome to each and every one of you joining us on Facebook, and especially to our spiritual family from the Universal Center for Proof of Better Living. It's going to be an awesome evening. I know that there are persons from all over the world join us this evening, and it is just such an amazing opportunity to share with you this evening's hour of connectivity, liberty, love, and laughter. And so before we go any further, I'd like to invite the pastor of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, Reverend John Scott, to do our opening affirmative prayer. Reverend John. Thank you, Sandy. And it's a joy to add my own words of welcome to Lifeline and to ask you to join me in the opening affirmative prayer as we begin, as all things begin, with God. Know with me now that there is one limitless life, one mind, one heart, one love, one infinite intelligence, one, 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 never two, in all, over all, and through all and therefore present right where we all are this evening in all its radiance, in all its beauty, with all its power, in its wholeness and holiness and truth. And this presence and this power finds its perfect expression through our beloved special guest, Reverend Sheila McKeithen, expressing exactly what we need to know this evening to take another step upon the upward spiral of light and life and truth into greater experiences of this omnipresent <clears throat> power and force that is at our disposal, that created us out of itself and that keeps our feet upon the perfect path because we are its beloved creations. And so we simply let go and allow this hour to be filled with God, knowing that God is truly all there is. We release this word to law, knowing it is already established and accomplished and we give thanks, we truly give thanks that this is so. And together we say, and so it is. And so it is. Thank you, Reverend John. And friends, you know, this lifeline activity that we are all taking part in this evening, it started about ooh, sometime back in May of last year as a Temple of Light wanted to find a way to to touch and to connect with um, a lot of our congregants who had to be staying home because of the pandemic. And of course, persons were concerned and, and perhaps to be a little bit worried. And so the purpose of this exercise is to, to see how best we can thrive and remain spiritually centered during these really, really extraordinary times. And we wanted to be able to provide spiritual tools and strategies to enable 
everyone to rise above and consciously respond to the challenges being faced during these times. It was also a way in which we could support others in shifting from a fear-based to a faith-based thinking and feeling. So this evening is um, our episode number eight. So we've done this eight times. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. I feel very, very proud. And this evening we have a very, very special guest with us. And I'll just tell you a little bit about her. She's the president of the Universal Foundation for Better Living, Inc., UFBL. It's a global organization with ministries worldwide established in 1974 by new thought giant, the late Dr. Johnny Coleman. Reverend Sheila was mentored in ministry by the late Dr. Mary Tomkin, the immediate past president of UFBL and ordained into ministry by Dr. Coleman in 1995. She's the third president in the 46 year history of UFBL. Upon her ordination, Reverend Sheila accepted a six month ministry assignment in Jamaica. Did you hear that right? Six months. Well, fast forward. Even though she was serving as an assistant attorney general in Florida at the time, six months, hmm. the rest friends is history. Um, I, this will be her 26th year 19, um, 2021, her 26th year in service to the nation of Jamaica. Once you come here, you have to stay. That's what Jamaica does. It's very seductive. So she was appointed to serve on a governmental board by Jamaica's first female prime minister, the Honorable Portia Simpson Miller. It's featured in P Peter Ferguson's December 2020 book, change makers, 101 women portraits of women in Jamaica. In 2019, her home county in Florida named a day in her honor. Wow. Thought organizations honored her with a Walden Award in the category of interfaith and intercultural understanding. She was inducted into the Martin Luther King Board of Preachers at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia in 2001. She's a spiritual teacher with an emphasis on healing, an author, spiritual activist, news articles, books, films, and movies. Reverend Sheila's favorite scripture is Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Friends, this evening, we're going to have a really, really wonderful experience with Reverend Sheila, Reverend Sheila McKeithen. And we're going to talk about omnipresence. Where is God when bad things happen to good people? Please open your heart and open your arms and help me welcome Reverend Sheila McKeithen. Reverend Sheila. Well, good evening, everyone. And I want to say thank you so much. I have my iPad open. I see that you are on the page. I know you don't believe me, but I see Carmen and Clark. I see Judith Gould. I see Reverend Fanny. I see Vance and Shirley and Marcella all the way down in Trinidad. I see Marcia and Courtney and Beverly in New York and Carol, and let's see, I see all of you. And I want to thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to be here with us as I celebrate with my dear brother, and he's my brother uh, <laughs> from another mother, uh, the Reverend John Scott. But John, uh, I want you to know how much I admire you oh. and how I am always batting for you you share with me the Walden Award for Interfaith and Intercultural Understanding. I received it in 2019 and you received it in 2020. So our work is recognized throughout the global New Thought family. And I just want to just say thank you so much for you and your team 
Sandra and Theo and Vance and Steve that have just welcomed me and helped me to look as great on camera as I do. Oh, I do do. I have to I have to mention uh, the Universal Center of Truth tech team uh, led by our board chair, Mr. Conroy Wilson, because they get me straight. And if I don't get it right, they will let me know. So I just want to say thank you to all of you. And what a wonderful prayer that has just set the stage for tonight's discussion. I'm going to just speak briefly uh, and then we're going to actually do some interacting, I understand. So I don't want to take up all of the time uh, speaking, but I do want to start with the first part of tonight's topic, and that's omnipresence. Understand that I am a metaphysician. Mm. I am a metaphysician. And that means that I don't just live on the surface of life. That means that I understand that there are, it's an underlying cause for everything that appears in my world and that appears in the world as general, in general. And because I am a metaphysician, I believe that when we talk about spiritual matters, we're really talking about spiritual ideas. And to the degree that we can embrace those spiritual ideas, we energize them and they take form. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, when I know that the presence of God or whatever name you know, the presence of love, the presence of mercy, the presence of life, whatever name you give the divine presence, the creator of all, what I know is the more you embrace the presence as a living reality in your life every day, the more expressions of that presence show up right where you are all the time, all the time. And so if the presence of the divine is spirit from the Latin spiritus, which means simply breath, which means everywhere, all the time, intangible beingness, but expressing in very definite ways through the qualities, the characteristics, then if we embrace that, then we don't have to finish the rest of the topic. Where is God when bad things happen to good people? Mm. Because that entire sentence, that question comes from a particular mindset. Mm -hmm. And it is not a mindset that embraces the allness of God, the perfection of God, the love of God, the everywhere present spirit of God. The consciousness that's indicated in Psalm 139, beginning at verse seven, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If I go to the farthest limits of the sea, you're there. And so if the presence is present and I can't get out of the presence because I'm an expression of the presence, then I'm not asking, where is God? Does that make sense? Yes. Think Absolutely. of a fish in the ocean. Let me make it really simple. A fish is in the ocean and the fish is saying, where is the water? Where is the water? The fish and the water are one. The fish is immersed in the water, but I'm not a fish. So I'm, I'm assuming the fish, like our oxygen, we're not seeing it, but there's evidence of it. The fish is breathing and taking in oxygen and or whatever it's taking in, the water or whatever it's taking in and its gills are moving. So there's a manifestation of it. And when you throw your hook and you catch a fish, and you take that fish out of the water, there are manifestations of that. There's manifestations that what was happening in those gills while that fish was in the water is no longer happening. And there are manifestations of that. I used to go fishing with my dad. And when he put the fish in the bucket, if it didn't have any water in it, that fish would flap and flap and flap until it flapped no more. But the, the point is that there are manifestations when you move yourself away from the oneness of God, there are also manifestations. And you begin to see 
evidence of all types of things. That's why our meditation is important. We meditate to what? Bring ourselves back to what is the living reality and the ever present truth, the everlasting truth all the time. Because we have all of these other suggestions that there is this and that and this and that, and they are manifestations, but we can change every manifestation by continually returning to the truth, forever and ever returning to the truth. And the truth is there is only one presence and one power in all of the universe, God, the good, omnipotent. Let me give you another example. A friend of mine out in California uh, posted last week that he was out doing something. I don't remember what it was. And he said, all of a sudden, two young guys uh, confronted each other for whatever reason that's not important right now. One pulled out a knife. The other one went uh, to his car and pulled out a high powered weapon, a gun, AK-47 or whatever it, it was. And the people began to just flee. And he said to me, he said, Reverend Sheila, I just stood there and I start, I stretched my hands out to what was happening. And I began to pray out loud. He said, and the two gentlemen went their way. Who is available? In those moments when we perceive danger, when we perceive uh, bad things, when we perceive fear in all of its manifestations, who is available in that moment as Nail was, the gentleman that stood and simply prayed, who is available or are we the ones who are also fear filled? Absolutely. Who is dwelling in the presence, the omnipresence of God, so that that presence can now be you come through them. They will be an instrument for the presence to use in that moment. Another example, I was on my way to Jamaica, probably traveling, doing something. And I realized as I headed to the airport, I was not gonna make it. So I called and made arrangements to get on the next flight. And so the person taking me to the airport, we stopped for something. I probably needed to get something or whatever. And we stopped. And as we got out of the car, it was a two-story building. And on top were some guys hanging outside of a barber shop. And down below, they were yelling and saying things to the guy below. And you could tell he was so angry, you know, to the point of tears, angry. He was so angry and he was headed to his car. I don't know why he was there, but I was led. I'm talking about being available. I don't know the guy, never saw the guy. And I don't even know if I can get back to the uh, place where we were at the time. And I saw this guy and he was walking toward me to go to his car. And I said, sir, I am not supposed to be here. I am supposed to be on a plane headed out of the country. And I'm telling you that because what I am going to say to you is get in your car and leave, please. Mm -hmm. Just get in your car and leave. I said, I want you to keep in mind, I am not supposed to be here in this spot. There is a reason that I am here and I believe it's for me to tell you to get in your car and leave. Do not confront whatever it is you're about to confront. I don't need to know the details. I'm going to say it again. I am not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be on a plane headed out of the country. And for some reason, I am here. And I believe it's to deliver this message to you. Powerful. Get in your car awesome. and leave. And the young man did just that. Wow. To this day, I think about that young man. To this day, I think about him because I don't know what would have happened. Had I not been there in that moment, 
And I have a dozen stories like that. One more and I'm going to stop. In April of 2001, it was seven o'clock in the morning. I'll never forget it. My dad called me and he said to me that my mother had made her transition. Now this was the Thursday before Good Friday. On the Sunday, Easter Sunday, I was scheduled to fly home to be with my mother for a week because at that time, my siblings and I were each taking turns spending a week with my mother and starting mm -hmm. Easter Sunday began my week. Mm -hmm. And so when my dad told me that, um, I remembered what spirit, what God, what the creator had said to me, because there had been a time maybe six months before when I questioned whether I should continue to come to Jamaica because of what the doctors were telling me about my mother who was living with me at the time in Florida. And I remember sitting on a couch one Saturday morning saying, God, I cannot leave my mother in the shape that she's in and go to Jamaica. Although I've got a Sunday program, I've got a class Saturday night to teach or Saturday afternoon. I said, I don't see how I can leave her. I said, you have to tell me what you want me to do. If you don't want me to go back, I won't go back. And God said, you go to Jamaica, I'll take care of your mother. Remember those words, remember those words. So when I got the call, fast forward, when I got the call in April of 2001 and I didn't tell anybody, we went through Thursday, we went through Good Friday and I did my lesson and whatever it was we were doing. I think we had an activity on the Saturday, a retreat, a prayer retreat. I did that, I didn't tell anybody. Sunday, I did my full Easter service. I didn't tell anyone. And at the end of the service, I shared with the congregation that my mother had passed and they already knew I was gonna be getting on a plane to go home because that was my week to go home and be with my, with my mother. Mm -hmm. So if I was of the mindset that there is a power at work in the universe other than God, I would have said, but God, you said you were gonna take care of my mother and I'm here in Jamaica, I could have been home. I could have, you know, I could have, I could go into all of that. But because I am a metaphysician, I believe that the presence of God is present. If you breathe, the presence of God is present as life. If you don't physically breathe, the presence of God is present as life. So I want you to just say with me, God is not a flea. God is God not is a flea. flea. God is not a flea. If you're on, I'm looking over here. If you're on Facebook, I want you to type in the chat. God is not a flea. F-L-E-A. God is <laughs> not, not a, flea. a flea. Why do I say that? Because God is not flickering here one minute, there one minute, there another minute, and oh God, if you had only been there, then, no, the presence of God is present as presence. The presence of love, the presence of life, the presence of answers to difficult questions, the, 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 the presence is simply present and you can access the presence. When I was taking my exams, I just said, God, show me what to study. Show me what to study, show me. And God showed me. I remember being in bed one night saying, God, I don't know how I'm gonna remember all of this stuff for this bar exam. I just don't know. And do you know that night I woke up in the middle of the night and I had a bookcase in my room and the moonlight was shining in on a book. And the book that the moonlight shown on was Open Your Mind to Prosperity by Catherine Ponder. I said, that's strange. And so I got up and I opened the book. Guess what the book, guess what I opened to the page? Guess what the page said? Mm -hmm. How a lawyer passed a bar exam. That's what the oh, book said. Yeah, yeah. How a lawyer passed a bar exam. And what's that not my question? So you see the answers, the solutions are mm -hmm. always right where we are, but we must make ourselves available for whatever is to come through mm -hmm. us, 
whatever it is that the spirit inspires through us, but it will only happen if we stop being fraidy cats. <laughs> I love it. We got to stop being fraidy cats. You know, Jesus is on his way uh, to perform a, 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 a miracle and uh, or, or on a healing journey and uh, to, to Jairus, his daughter. And while he's on his way, the woman with an issue of blood for 12 years who had been so afraid came out of her fear closet and said, it's okay if I can just touch the hem of the garment, if I can just touch uh, just a little piece, if I can just get a, be in touch, that's, think of it like that. Stop thinking about a dress or clothes. If I can just touch a piece of the truth, just a piece, I can be made whole. And so that's what I want to say to you. So where is God when, when bad things happen to good people? Number one, God is everywhere present all the time. Number two, there is no power working in opposition to God because God Amen. is the one principle of absolute good. Mm -hmm. um, number, number three, God is not a flea that flicks with you one day and then flicks with somebody else the next day and then flicks over to somebody else the next day because God is principle, eternal, everlasting, unchanging, the same today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Now, our job is to understand the nature of God is absolute good. So that means nature, the nature of God, good, good, absolute good is available all the time, but we have to be available to what's already available. Matthew 6, 33, therefore seek ye first, seek ye first the kingdom of God, the kingdom of good, the kingdom of love, the kingdom of answers, the kingdom of solutions, and the things, the things are the manifestation will be added unto you. Okay, awesome, awesome. Wow. So wow. in essence, Reverend Sheila, it's, it, it's when I or any of us forget who we are and we enter in that experience of, of, of separation that um, the perception of bad things, because really life is just occurring, okay? So, so we are the ones who give it the meaning that this is something bad and that is something good. But once we are in alignment with, once we remember who we are and we know who we are, then um, you know, we are able to, to be in the right place at the right time be, be able to provide support for others to deal with our issues as they occur in a way that is in, in alignment with the highest and best. Absolutely. And you know, <clears throat> and to, 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 to see it rightly, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that everything in my world, uh, if you look and I told you some things, you say, ooh, eh, ooh. But guess what? <clears throat> I know the presence is present. And for me, the presence is more than any experience I will ever have. Absolutely. <clears throat> you know, you know, Reverend Chilo, um, Ernest Holmes said that all the power there is, all the presence there is, all the love there is, all the peace there is, all the good there is, all the God there is, is omnipresent. So I really bless you. And I've, I've just, I'm smiling because two things, I have a friend who lives in New York who always calls me and says, I'm in a flap. And I'm going to tell her that story of you fishing with your dad, you know, and say she can choose to be in a flap or she can she can hold on to that presence. And I also got a slap from my mother. And I hope wherever she is in the universe, she was listening to you this evening because, you know, that lovely old Christian hymn, just as I am without one without one plea. I oh. sang just as I am without one flea and got got a slap. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so Thank you for that. Very powerful, very powerful images indeed. Uh, if we can just hold on to that, mm -hmm. act as though I am and I will be in that presence and that power that mm -hmm. sustains me. I love what you said about, about our title this evening. If you, if you are coming from the position of being a metaphysician and mm -hmm. you really believe and hold on to the truth that God is all there is, one, 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 never two, then the, the topic itself no longer poses a problem. Yes. Because yeah. Reverend Emma Dot Lemsen used to say, we must stop labeling. You know, it's we that label things good and bad and yes. you know, unacceptable or acceptable or whatever. It's, it's us. 
And my God. You know, in, 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 in Genesis, um, in chapter two, it says that God allowed all the animals to pass before Adam and Adam got to name them. Mm. You can name it. So every experience you get to name, anything you name, you give it a nature. Yes. Yes. So are we saying then that you walk around with your head in the sand? Didn't you hear what just happened in Boulder, Colorado, where the man went into the grocery store and I guess, I, I don't know the details, but uh, went into a grocery store and anyway, the whole bottom line is a lot of people that went in there for bread didn't get home. Mm. And so are we denying that? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. But one of the things we have to also take responsibility for, all of us, at least those of us in the United States, we mm. have a responsibility just like everybody in every country. Mm. And that is we don't hold um, our elected officials accountable to do what we've elected them to do. We mm. don't. So these things continue to happen. Mm. It's not like this is the first time that's happened and not that it should even be repeated. But the thing is, is that we see there's an underlying problem, but we choose to ignore it. And so whenever error is being entertained and we just don't do our part, in other words, nail for some reason, he was inspired in that moment to just hold up his hands and the words came and the outcome was very different than it could have been. Me, I could have um, just walked by because I don't know the guy. I don't know the guys up in the barbershop. I don't know what they're in. It's none of my business, but I was inspired. Mm -hmm. And the imagery that came to me is you're supposed to be on a plane. Tell him. In other words, it's got nothing to do with you, Sheila. It's got to do with what I want to do in this moment. And what I want to do, can I use you? Are yes. you available? Yes, who is available? Our fear yes. written, we're not even available to hear the whisperings of the still small voice that wants to use our hand to feed a child, that wants to use us to um, run for office, that wants to use us for its purposes. We're, you know, we have to be open and available to it. And I like to keep saying that meditation is one of the ways that we stay in, connected with who we really are because we are more than the bodies that we show up in. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. are spiritual beings. We mm -hmm. have a spiritual purpose. We have a spiritual origin mm -hmm. and there is a spiritual assignment for each one of us. And so when I came to Jamaica, it was a spiritual assignment. And on that Saturday morning early, the spirit affirmed that for me because my I put my human uh, self on the line and said, God, if this is over, it's over. I'm willing to stay home and never go back to Jamaica. You tell me what you want me to do. And then the words came, the inspiration came. And let me tell you what I didn't tell you was while I was sitting there and just quietly listening for what God wanted me to do because my plane, I had to get to the airport to get to the plane, but I needed to know what I needed to do. And I just didn't feel right leaving my mother that day because of the shape she was in. And so I said, God, what do you want me to do? The phone rang. It was my brother who lives in Canada. Sheila, I just landed in Fort Lauderdale. Really? Yeah. I'm coming to hire a nurse for our mother and I'll be there uh, in a few minutes. That was my answer. So yep. I could go do what I've been asked to do, be available to that because God had already arranged. My brother was already in town. I didn't even know it and was coming to take care of all those details and stay two weeks at that. Amazing. Being available. Yes. Uh, Reverend Sheila, I just want to, to, to stop a minute to acknowledge one of Jamaica's um, sprinters uh, who checked in to acknowledge um, the experience she's having here this morning, this afternoon. And um, she's Aileen Bailey, who is now in South Carolina. So just want to give you up, Aileen. 
Um, she is bigging up Reverend John, her, she called you Uncle John. Yes. And so also uh, Reverend Sonia says, Crystal Claire, Reverend Sheila, thank you. And um, Carol Campbell um, saying that we have good available, we have to be available to the good that is available. Um, just a, a quick um, a question. There's a common statement that we have in Jamaica that says, um, everywhere me turn, maka joke me. I've heard that, that one actually. Yes. There's no escaping the harshness of life because there's there are some persons that have this, this perception that life is hard. How do we get to, when we know what, um, that God is omnipresent, how do we shift the consciousness? As, as a metaphysician, we know what to do, when to do, how to do. But how, for some of us folks who are not quite there, how do we shift the consciousness to get to that space of not feeling that there is maca everywhere um, to cause some uh, or demise? What do we do? Well, one of the things is we have been conditioned to simply fall in line. It's the herd mentality. Mm. We have been conditioned. So because you have this Jamaican proverb, just like I have proverbs where I come from, doesn't mean that it's true for you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say, oh, everywhere I turn, Maka juk me, uh, just because it's popular in the culture, mm -hmm. just because they make a song out of it. It's like chicken, Mary Hawk, Denier, you know? Uh, if you get too happy, something's gonna happen for the US citizens that are tuning in that may not know what we're talking about. That's what that means. So you have to take control of your thinking. Yep. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 23, seven says, as a man, and I insert woman, thinks, so are they. So are you going to be. So then you're told in Proverbs then to guard your heart with all diligence. For from it flow the issues of life. And so if you feel your heart, which is your subconscious mind, if you feel your consciousness, your mind, your awareness with bad things are always happening, guess what? That's exactly what you're going to get. Absolutely. You're going to get that. Now, let me tell you something. In the roughest of times, and don't think I'm on easy street every day, but I have to tell myself, God is here. Therefore, everything is already all right. Mm -hmm. And I, have to, I may have to say it 5,000 times. Is it worth it? Yes, because I want the results. Yes. Because if you line up with good, see, the good is already lined up with you. You're the one over there in far field. Uh, yep. You were saying a sprinter is on the line. The sprinter will tell you that when they are ready to run a race, if she or he does not stay in their lane, what happens? Disqualified. There is an effect. There is mm -hmm. a consequence. And the consequence is you will be disqualified, right? So therefore, the sprinter wants to what? Stay in their lane because they're in the race because they want to win, right? If they're you're in good. the game of life, stay in your lane. Stay in the lane. It's going to get you the result that you want. Everywhere I turn, Mecca juk me is not going to get you where you want to go. Chicken Mary Hawk Denier is not going to get you where you want to go. Why are you hanging out with that? Why are you fascinated with that? You can, just like you form your mouth to say everywhere I turn, Mecca juk me, you could say, God is all, way, all, all, God is all there is and God is with me now. God is seeing me through. Absolutely. You know, Love is in my favor. Absolutely. Every day and every way, I'm feeling better and better. You know, Ooh, Reverend Sheila? So much money, I don't even know how I'm going to spend it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Now, no. when we do that, people say, oh, you just pretending you're this, you're that. No, but you want me to bellyache and tell you how terrible I feel and how bad things are and how wicked the prime minister is because the church can only have 12 people and it's Easter season. Now, if I said that, everybody would say, yeah, 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 yeah. But if I come, see, in the scriptures, the question is asked, and this is in the Christian scriptures, how will we know the true teachers? Here's the answer. 
you will know them by the fruit they bear. Mm -hmm. The fruitage. So if your fruit is all mecca juke you, the hawk is near, so I got to keep a frown on my face. Don't complain when you end up wrinkled. <laughs> Love it. You know, Ernest Holmes said that the highest realization we can have is a recognition of the omnipresence of spirit. And that's what I'm getting strongly from you, uh, Reverend Sheila. God is omnipresent spirit omnipresent so spirit. when i'm if i'm in search if i'm if i'm in a hospital room all of god is there yep if i'm in a situation uh like a uh, nail i wanted to give you real life examples i didn't want to try to make anything up where one person's got a high-powered weapon one's got a knife and people are running like crazy but the knowingness that all of god is here changed that situation around. Absolutely. Which I'm talking real life stuff. See, I like, I have friends and I, we talk the real life stuff. We're not talking about some theory. We're talking the real life that Different. this works in everyday life. And so I call myself and you guys have them practitioners. And that means you're always practicing the truth. You're practicing Absolutely. living in oneness with God. And you're not ignoring that somebody's not well. You're not ignoring that this over here hasn't happened. But if God is here, what does that mean for us right now? It may mean get some food together and take over to that family. It may mean offer that person a ride to take their child to the hospital. It may mean pay the tuition for that child who's focused, although they're in a community that doesn't support them, a home that doesn't support them be a mentor. There is something the spirit is imparting in the midst of all that's going haywire. There is something, but we have to be open to it if we're going to bring it and be the vessels for that manifestation of the higher potential. And if we're not willing to be the vessel for the higher potential, then we need not complain when the other stuff seems to take over the entire world. Wow. So, um, Tamu says, um, she, she, she creates a shift around the, um, the statement. She says, everywhere me turn, God juke me with love. <laughs> yes. You know, there is a, a, a um, C.S. Lewis um, says this. He says, speaks to us in our pleasures, speaks in our conscience, but shouts in our pain. So that that it's perhaps in the, the, the so-called hard moments, difficult moments that God is even more present or more, the, 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 the allness of God is there for us to, 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 to make ourselves uh, or avail ourselves of it. Absolutely. And you know, in um, 1996, January, I was given less than six days to live. Mm. And it was never a time I didn't think uh, as I walked through that, there wasn't a time when the doctors told me that when I believed that they had the final word because there had to be a reason why I had been led to this teaching. There had to be a reason why it resonated with me and why I was busy in classes studying it and doing my best to practice it. And I'm so grateful that I listened and was led to the teaching four years earlier because little did I know that uh, four years later, uh, I would need it as a lifesaver, as a life preserver. I would need it. As a lifeline. <laughs> as a lifeline. lifeline yeah. There you go. Yeah. As a lifeline. And so, you know, you have to have your own testimony. Mm -hmm. you know, there comes a place where you listen to the testimony of others, but there's nothing like your own testimony. Your own. And if when you are in deep, I want to say do do. Mm -hmm. If you don't practice, then when are you going to practice? When you don't, when you appear, it appears you don't have money in your pocket, you don't have enough. That's the time to practice. God is here as substance. God is here as whatever is required. Open my eyes. I love this. This, this is my saying. 
Open my eyes that I may see the good you've already given to me. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Because I'm not begging. Because I believe it's already here. And available. Beautiful. And it's to all of us. But we have to be present to it. Mm. Um, I've, I've always been very um, committed to supporting others in, okay, let me put it a differ, different way. I have seen the promised land. I want you to see it too. I have always been hungry for others to experience the truth, experience their omnipresence um, or, on who they are. And um, one little birdie on this shoulder will say, just allow them to be, they have to have it in their own way. Another little birdie here says, you know, you're a practitioner of truth. You need to be the light, show the light and so on. How do you, how do you um, support others to really, you know, experience their full selves and the, omnip the omnipresence of God the way they should? Be it yourself. Mm. Mm. Be it. Because in, in the, remember the power is in the being, the power is not in the doing. Mm. The power is in the being, you know, during this Lenten season in our ministry, we're working with solitude because solitude empowers us to rise. And we're looking at all the ways that Jesus stole away, left people, just left them. And there are critical moments when he pulled away. The, night, the day before he called the 12 disciples, he spent the whole night in prayer. We know he was, on, he was in prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane trying to get some folks. This is your answer right here. Trying to get some folks, Peter, John, right? Right? And James to pray with him because they were his inner circle. And what did they do? Go to sleep. They went to sleep. He said, could you not watch with me for one hour? And then he goes back, prays by himself. He comes back and they're still asleep. You know why? Because that wasn't their assignment. Mm. We try and give people assignments that's not their assignment. So they can't do it. Mm. They, that's not, Jesus, this is for you. It's about you establishing your connection. So what wow. Jesus doesn't know is in a few hours, number one, Peter going to say, I don't even know you. I never met the man. Mm -hmm. Same Peter right there. You're trying to get the prayer for you, right? The others are going to run in fear. You see? And so there are certain things I have learned mm -hmm. that are my assignment. And so my assignment is to be it. And if Sandra, there is something you are to impart, to give, even a book. Sometimes I'm talking to people or I'm just listening to them. And while they're talking, I, what I'm saying inside as a practitioner, I'm saying, God, what is this really all about? Why are we really here? Mm. And I'm just listening. Yes. I'm just listening. I'm not trying to figure out. I'm not trying to come up with an answer. And I'll hear that book. Give them the book, blah, 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 blah. And so I'll let them talk and we'll have our exchange. And I'll say, you know, I'm led to give you this book or I'm led to tell you to read the 23rd Psalm every day uh, or, you know, whatever it is that, that comes through. Sure. But what you want is you're wanting to help somebody is not enough. Got you. Got you. Because remember, there must be a willingness to be helped. Mm -hmm. Mm. There's some people with their mouth saying, help me, help me, help me, but they really don't want to be helped. There's some people you help one time and they take off. They're, they're gone. They're, 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 what, I, what I mean is they're done with that situation and they just soar. Other mm. people, they come back again and again and He's again and again, and again with the same thing or different levels of the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that's because there's an unwillingness to change. See, for you to get your breakthrough, and I talked about this yesterday, for you to get your breakthrough, you got to be willing to break the pattern that got you in the situation in the first place. first place. And if you're not willing to break that pattern, it could be an emotional pattern. It could be habits that you have, right? It could be a way of being. And unless you change that, no matter how much practitioner Sandra helps you, you are not going to get any relief because you're still in that same pattern. Now, in meditation and prayer, 
the spirit will show you what the pattern is that you're in so you can break it. Got you. That's what happened with Myrtle Fillmore. She heard one lecture, one, Eugene B. Weeks, a Christian science practitioner, and she walked away with one thought, just one, that as a child of God, you do not inherit sickness. Well, in her mind, she inherited it because everybody in her family had this disease and they were going to die from it. And she, she knew that. They had told her that, that everybody gets it, tuberculosis, and you, everybody then dies from it, and that's it. But when she heard him out of his entire lecture, that one thing stuck with her as a child of God, I do not inherit sickness. She was willing then to what? Confront the history, the tradition of her family with that one thought and it broke it. Mm -hmm. And Myrtle went on to live some 40 years beyond wow. awesome. that. You know, this is so awesomely thought provoking. And we just have a, a couple minutes left. And so perhaps um, if there's anyone uh, listening, watching, if there's a question that you'd like to ask of Reverend Sheila, um, just type it into the chat and, and you know, we'll get to her. What would you like to know? So while, while people are thinking about what to ask Reverend Sheila, um, what, what is, you talked about prayer, you talked about meditation, you talked about um, just, just finding solitude and being with oneself. And in that space, you know, you'll, listen, you'll hear this, this still small voice and know exactly what we need to do. What else can we do? Um, begin to reorient yourself. And, and I'm actually doing that. Um, and my board of directors has helped me tremendously. Um, I had a, 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 a Earth Day celebration, I call it, the first day of the month. Mm -hmm. And um, when I finished, uh, my board chair had called me and said, uh, after the service on the 28th, just bring your bag or have your bag ready because we're sending you off for two days. And then another member called me and said, and don't take that computer and don't take this and don't take that. And um, I, I went off and when I stepped on the property, I knew right away that that's where I was supposed to be. And I knew why I was supposed to be there because you know we're in the middle of what you know we've termed a pandemic. And I am not only the senior minister here at the church in Jamaica, the Universal Center of Truth, but the entire organization, He's on uh, I'm the president. And so, you know, it's like keeping the churches going, keeping the churches open, uh, working with the ministers every single week I meet with them, um, sharing ideas, collaborating, making sure that they are all right, them and their families. And so I've just been going, 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 going. Mm -hmm. and, um, and actually I think busier since the pandemic than even before. And you know, I was busy then too. Yeah. But I have just been embracing moments of solitude and quiet and getting up and sitting on my porch with the, with the flowers and just listening to what God has been saying all along. But I was so busy. Mm -hmm. okay, so I'm really you. very grateful. So solitude, practice. There's a book by Richard Foster called Celebration of Discipline. And there are di spiritual disciplines in every tradition. And they are ways that you practice what you say you believe. And so prayer, solitude, silence are all part of our spiritual discipline mm -hmm. as is study. Mm -hmm. the study, study, study. Mm -hmm. you, you can quote Holmes, but you ought to be the quote that Holmes quoted. Yep. Yes. You ought to have some testimony yes. and you are proving the truth in every moment, in every situation. Now, if God is here now, Sheila, what does this mean? You know, how should you be responding? Is this the appropriate response if all of God is here? Mm -hmm. And then I find that another good one is we've got to stop trying to make people who be who we want them to be. Mm. You know, we want to make them in our image. And that causes a lot of frustration, particularly 
in relationships on all kinds of relationships. If the person says no, and they tell you no in many different ways, then the answer is just no, move on, move on. I know you really want them to, and you want them to be happy and successful. And you see the answer is so clear and they are not doing it. Well, it's because it's a, my, my teacher used to say this. She used to say, Sheila, it's a soul thing. And so everybody has to get into the depths of their soul and see what it is they have claimed as true that is not true at all. It's not the truth about them. It's not the truth about the situation and it's just not the truth. But because I don't wanna move, I decide to accept it as true. But if you accept a lie as the true, it's still a lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we have about a minute left. That's all? And, yes. Can you imagine? Any and questions? Oh, you know what? They're all putting in. Oh, they're putting in God is not a flea. You know, that's, you got to go back and look at the page. You'll see that everybody's got that down. God is not a flea. That's there, is, so there is one question that Carol is asking. And she said, what if it's not so much unwillingness to do what it is that we need to do, but just plain old fear? Can you just... Um, speak to that in a in less than a minute it's still unwilling mm. we always want to put our word on it carol it's still fear you're either coming from fear or you're coming from faith it's still an unwillingness because you're you're afraid to change there's fear you're afraid to change because of what might happen you're afraid because of what somebody might think and so you you it's unwillingness to simply take what I like to call uh, a free, a free flow in the spirit. You know, like water. Have you ever just laid in the water and just, just laid there, just, just let it. You're not trying to make it. You're not trying to control anything. You're just floating. And that's what I'm talking about. So even if, don't be defensive. Be willing to let it be unwillingness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just be willing. Be willing to let it be unwillingness. Your unwillingness, Your unwillingness. to change. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Wow, this has been quite an amazing evening. We could go on and on. There's just so much, so much richness, so much awesomeness. And um, I, I know, I mean, you know, we all can go back and visit um, the Facebook page and, and, and see the recording of this all over again, because there's, there's so much, um, so many tidbits and, and truths and um, things that we need to do that I need to do for myself, for my life, for my consciousness to be able to, to be for myself so that I can be um, a, a better practitioner so that I can let my light shine the way that is good for me. And this goes for each and every one of us as well. Uh, oh, it's been an awesome journey. Sandy. Uh, what's that, beloved? A quick, a quick one from Clive Edwards. He says, perhaps we can start using the term solitude rather than isolation to describe the condition of being in lockdown. Oh, excellent. Very good point. Oh, Thank you for that. Time to come apart a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. But remember, solitude is different from separation. It's That's right. different from sol uh, uh, what's the other one? It's from different from separation, isolation. from distancing. Uh, and it's right. different from isolation. Yep. Solitude is an intentional uh, being in the presence Above. of God. Amen. So there are a lot of people in isolation and they feel alone and they're not, they don't see that time as a time to commune with the spirit, the time to get in touch with their higher selves. They're not seeing that. So they are not in solitude. So as long as you know that solitude has to do with your being in the presence of God and knowing it consciously so when I talk about solitude. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Reverend Sheila. And so friends, it has been a really remarkable evening and really great time spent together on our Lifeline program this evening. And we know now uh, we understand more deeply uh, omnipresence and that there is no there are no bad things happening with I mean, God just is, and we just are. And in our consciousness, we attract uh, accordingly. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that we, we would really like to um, support and to encourage is to, 
to have a to just to keep doing this work to keep reading and studying and praying and meditating because this is the way that we experience we fully experience that business of um of being omni um, 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 connected with God and experiencing the, um, the omnipotent presence of God. And of course, as we open our hearts and, and give, it, 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 it shows our, our sense of, of connectedness with the infinite presence and power, the givingness, the infinite wellspring of God's good. And so we invite you to, um, if you feel so moved, to make a contribution to our account at the Bank of Nova Scotia, New Kingston branch, and the account number is 20941. So that's the Bank of Nova Scotia, New Kingston branch, account number 20941. And so I would just like to thank um, you, um, Reverend Sheila, and I'm going to ask our pastor, Reverend John, to just do a very, very um, special thank you to you. A very, very special thank you to you, my, my beautiful sister of my soul. And I just think that this hour with you has been too short, yes. but so beautiful and so full of that presence and power of which you have spoken so passionately. And I know you have touched hearts and lives, and consciousnesses all across this globe to the honor and glory of that which gave you the assignment mm -hmm. to stand up and be counted and to be there for God. So where was God when that young man was going to his car? God was where you were, Reverend Dr. Sheila McKeithen, and made that presence and power walk with you every step of life's way in your radiant ministry and in the good and the beauty and the love that you share with so many people. Thank you for sharing it with us this evening. Mm -hmm. Would you close us with a treatment? Yes. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. That's so beautiful. And I just I just want to say before we close to the audience, I am not suggesting that there are not people in the world experiencing pain and trauma. I am not suggesting that in the least bit. But there is something that we are being called to do. And what I am saying is, let's get still and get our inner direction. What is it that I am called to do? What role can I play? Absolutely. What is my assignment in all of this? And as that assignment comes through, I'm saying, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid mm -hmm. to be obedient to the assignment that is yours to do. Maybe you're the one to write that legislation. Maybe you're the one to call that politician. Maybe you're the one to offer tuition to that uh, child or a place of safety. Maybe we are the ones that are supposed to build that home where children will be safe. So I'm not saying ignore uh, what's happening around you. What I am saying, ask, what is mine to do? And then have the courage and the faith to do it. And so it is. So I place you lovingly in the care and keeping of the one who made you in the beginning, that one that knows you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, the one who is healing you, blessing you, and providing for you abundantly, the one who knows who you truly are and is calling you out because there is no hiding place. I bless you, I honor you, and thank you so much for showing up. You are loved, blessed, and appreciated, each and every one. And so oh, it is. And so Amen. It is. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Sheila. And I would just like to say thank you too to our tech team, to, to Vance, to Theo and Steve, and to everyone who made the choice this evening to tune into our lifeline. We love you, we bless you, we uplift you and know that uh, omnipresence is your absolute experience now. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of the evening. And so it is. Okay.